I bought this t-shirt at Target on clearance for $6.50, but it needs so much work. I mean, it looks ridiculous. It's way too baggy. The sleeves are way too big and baggy. And most importantly, it's way too long. We need to slim it. Like what, what's up with that? That doesn't make any sense to me. I'm SD and we've done a lot of different alterations so far and this is going to be, and I promise you, one of the easiest ones that we've ever done. No, like it's, it's stupid easy. It's so easy to do. But if you're new and you've never tailored anything before, you can go get caught up down there in the description. You can learn about where to get a sewing machine. You can learn about needles and threads and tailoring chinos and jeans and jackets, all that stuff. So go binge watch that. Now, I do not think that my t-shirt should be this long. I think that it should be this long. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a pin in right there. Boop. Now that pin you see right there, that is going to be the very bottom of our t-shirt. And what we have to do now is we have to starch it and iron it down real good so that it is nice and flat. All right, so here's what we got going on here. We have our shirt here and I've got the pin still stuck in there exactly where I want it to be. Now what we're gonna do is we gotta measure how much we're actually taking off of this thing. So. That's when we take this and we do that. Seven inches. We are taking off seven inches from the bottom of the shirt. I didn't think that was actually possible, but um, apparently it is. I think that's kind of ridiculous, but whatever. It is what it is. Now, this is what I need to point out to you. This down here. This is what's called the original hem. This is the hem that came from the factory. Now, a lot of people like this hem and there are ways to do it so that you can keep this hem intact and you can also shorten the shirt at the same time. But here's what's up. You can only do that if you're taking off like an inch, two inches, maybe three inches, not a lot at all. Anything more than that, and that thing's just, it's gotta go away. It just is what it is, not a big deal. So, okay, so we got our shirt flipped inside out. Where'd my pin go? Oh, there it is, okay, cool. Now, we're gonna fold it and we're gonna iron it down. And when you fold your shirt, obviously you wanna make it so that it's straight, but surprisingly, it's not really all that hard to do. You could make it straight pretty easily. That's what Ellen DeGeneres said. Because you wanna make sure that it's straight. You don't wanna be walking around with no like, crooked t-shirt like hey what's up guys look at me my t-shirt fits me perfectly but it's all lopsided like that yeah have fun picking up girls like that so we got it pretty straight so we could take this pin out that we were using there temporarily and now actually I want to show you this first so when I was talking about the original hem and all that stuff this I got this see this this is a tank top with the American flag on it you know why why not, this is America. And I'm actually, I'm gonna turn a t-shirt into a tank top coming up here shortly. We're gonna use this for it, but I'm gonna show you the hem on the bottom down here. This is what a factory hem looks like. Looks like that on the inside, and it looks like that on the outside. This is exactly what our white t-shirt is gonna look like when we're done with it. This top straight stitch up here is one inch from the bottom down here, and then this second straight stitch that's going right across there, that's a quarter of an inch down from there. So, all right, we gotta iron this. All you do, just get a whole bunch of starch, heavy starch, the heavier the better, spray the crap out of it and just iron away. And you wanna take your time on this part too, because you wanna make sure that not only is it flat, but you wanna make sure you don't have any wrinkles down here like this. You wanna get rid of those wrinkles because otherwise you're just gonna sew them right into the shirt. And again, what are you gonna do? Walk into public, be like, hey, what's up, y'all? I tailored my own shirt, check this out. Ignore those wrinkles, girl. Hey, what's your number? No, 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 don't even look at that. Don't even look at that. What's your number? How about we, do, how about we go out sometime? That'd be nice, huh? Irons are hot, too, when you, when you iron them. Be, be careful. There, all right. So we're good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple of pins and we are gonna put these pins in here temporarily just to kind of hold our place for now. We're gonna move them around in a couple of minutes, but we wanna make sure that our flat seam here doesn't get all crazy or move on us or shift on us because that's annoying when that happens. We're gonna put them on the front 
and we're gonna put them on the back, right back here. Does it, does it make me narcissistic if I bought these for myself? They were like 15 bucks, I need new ones. Don't judge me. Okay, now these temporary pins that we have in here, they're just placeholders for now. They're not doing anything special aside from just keeping this guy in place so it doesn't go all crazy on us. We don't end up wasting our time now. Since we are taking off seven inches from this and we're gonna put our top straight stitch one inch from the bottom down here, what we gotta do is we gotta measure it. So let's do that. So grab your measuring tape and go one inch from the very bottom down there. And we're gonna do the same thing with these other pins, one inch. Now, as far as the number of pins that you wanna use, you can use the number of pins that you're kinda comfortable with. I'm going to add a pin right here, and I'm also gonna add a pin, um, I don't know, I'm gonna add one right down here, just so that I can make sure that everything is straight and I line up these pins as good as I can, and I almost burned my hand on this hot iron, so maybe I should, I don't know, turn that off? That's probably a good idea, huh? What do you think? My daughter was about to learn some swear words today, that's for show. Sure. Flip your shirt over and do the same thing on the other side. And that's it, that's it, that's it. Time to sew, let's go, let's, let's do this, all right. That's never happened before. <laughs> okay, so let's line it up and I always like to make a point and say that measuring and pinning is the easiest part. It's the easiest part of this entire process. And it really is, <laughs> except for this. This is gonna be the one time where sewing is gonna be trickier than pinning. And the reason for that is because we're sewing in a straight line. I made an entire video on it, on how to sew in a straight line. There's a seam guide right there. What we want to do is we want to look at our seam guide, make sure that the edge of our shirt lines up with our seam guide. What we don't want to do is stare at our needle going up and down. That's not okay. That's not how this whole thing works. You will have a crooked stitch if you do that. Now I've got a perfect one inch line right there. And take your time, go as slow as you need to. Don't, uh, don't put your your needles on there, cause it'll, it'll make them go flying. The shirt is so ridiculously wide that this is taking me like 30 minutes to get all the way around it. It's like sewing around the earth, jeez. Okay, so we're done with this first stitch here and a lot of things happened that I'm actually glad happened because they might happen to you. Now, as you can see, we have some pulling in this stitch right here. It's kind of pulling at our shirt and it's pulling at our fabric because the tension between the two of them is very different. Now, the reason why it's doing that is because I didn't adjust my stitch tension. I made an entire video on stitch tension and why it's important, how it works and all that stuff. This is the reason why you want to adjust it. Now, is it the end of the world? No, but does it look good? Not really. And there's a couple other things I also want to point out here too. So the reason why you can kind of see these stitches, they're called skipped stitches. What my machine was doing was skipping stitches. And that can happen for a couple of different reasons. That can happen because of the stitch tension. And that can also happen and usually happens because your thread isn't the same. So the thread that's in your bobbin isn't the same thread that you're using on your top stitch. Now this over here, this just straight up ain't all right. You see that? That's not okay. That's where we started our stitch and that just, just kind of looks messy. Now the reason why it looks so messy is because I'm using a different color thread. If you were to do all of this, if everything looked exactly the way that it does, only I was using white thread, you wouldn't really notice any of this. This is why I use a different color thread so you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. And if I make a mistake, you'll see exactly what that mistake looks like. And this too, this is the reason why you wanna check your stitch tension because I sewed right over a wrinkle right there. Yeah, that's not okay. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off this extra fabric here. We're gonna cut it to about, Mm, about half of an inch to that line right there. We're gonna cut all that down and then we're gonna sew another straight line a quarter of an inch down from this straight line. Sometimes I feel like I have to hurry up but then I remember that I can just speed all of this up and post.
Look at all this. Look at this. Look at this extra fabric. This is how long our shirt was. Oh my goodness. Are you serious? That's uh, that's everything that we took off of our shirt. Look at that. Wow, man. So this is what we're left with here. I cut it down to that top stitch right there. Now we're gonna put another straight stitch a quarter of an inch down from our first stitch. And what I loved about this entire process is not only does it show you how to shorten your shirt, but it shows you that like mistakes happen too. I'm not perfect at this by any means at all. I still make mistakes. I still get things wrong. And all of this really kind of showed you what to avoid when you do it. Now you know that you need to check all of your sewing machine settings before you start. And even then, that still might not be enough. That's just not only with tutorials on YouTube, but that's just life in general. Nothing really ever goes according to plan. You are gonna mess up so many clothes when you start this, but guess what? That's just how it happens. So just push through it and get used to it and practice. When I started on this entire journey, if you would have told me like two years ago or three years ago that I would be sitting here making a YouTube tutorial on how to use a sewing machine. And not only that, if you would have told me that I would be using my mom's sewing machine and that I wouldn't have my mom anymore, and not only me, that my daughter wouldn't have her mom anymore, I would have called you absolutely crazy. But here we are, that's the life, bro. So just suck it up, keep moving forward, and practice sewing stuff. I don't know how those two things are related, but you get my point. Wait for it, wait for it, boom! We are done just like that. And now we have a t-shirt that doesn't look horribly ridiculous on us. It actually is the right length. It's not like three feet too long. It only takes you about 20 minutes or so. That's if you actually do everything properly, am I right? Yes, you can do the exact same thing on dress shirts. They'll have their own video and I promise I'll get my sewing machine settings right. SD out, deuces!